Have you ever wondered how people attract business like a magnet? Feel like, you know, they get all the good stuff and you don't? Or ever feel like, man, I wish people would listen to me like the way they listen to that person? Hey, this is Dan. And in this video, what I want to do is I want to share with you um, basically five basic frameworks, frameworks that you will use to have people start looking at you as the expert in your field, even if you don't feel like you're an expert. Now, the reason why I'm doing this for you or saying this video is one, so I can learn more, two, so I can give you value, provide massive value to allow you to help you um, serve your people and give you some insight that people I don't believe that are doing um, and doing more for you than anybody else. So um, what I learned um, the other day, I was watching a video or Again, let me let me rephrase that. I was on a training with the number one salesman that worked for Tony Robbins. The Tony Robbins. Yes, the Tony Robbins. And if you guys know me by now, you know that I love Tony Robbins. He's like A-OK -okay in my book. Um, but this guy sold for Tony Robbins and he was the number one sales guy in that in that company at the time. In fact, Tony Robbins made an award after this man. And so when I was listening to him, he was talking about how to actually make high ethical sales. And I was like, whoa, okay. Without using sleazy salesy tactics, like, um, you know, trying to, you know, if, uh, what do they call it? Uh, like closing techniques, like without having to use like crazy closing techniques and more closes than, than not, like a bunch of closing things, without having to use that and lead um, through coaching, like coaching sales rather than having to sell them into a product. It was a totally different sale, completely different. And when he was talking about it, I was like, whoa, that's crazy. But I wasn't only thought about that. I didn't think about it just then. I thought back to when did I first learn about this thing? And I said, oh my gosh, a guy named Russell Brunson wrote a book on this particular thing before. And he's actually talked about it very subtly in his book. And, um, you know, it's this book right here. It's expert secrets. Um, but you can go get a free copy with the link below. You can go get a free copy. It's an affiliate link. Just go get it. It's cool. Um, it'll help me out, but it also helps you out because, um, you get it for free. You don't have to go buy it on Amazon and you'll get to see the whole process. Anyways, uh, let's get back to where we were. So he started saying these things, right? And I was like, is this really how you sell? Like, cause Russell does this a lot. And he goes, yes, Russell does do this a lot. And I trained his highest, his high paid member, like his speaking coach who spent, who, who Russell pays $40,000 to talk to, to train him. And he said, this was the best training I've ever had. And I was like, okay, good. So I'm listening to a, to someone that has results and have current results, not like in the past and flash in the past, like they have current results. And this was just recently, right? So what he was talking about was using frames for sales. And I was like, wow, like instead of just selling things, maybe I could do this or maybe we can do this in a sense that doesn't have people going off salesy, right? And having a positioning, a standpoint, a, a way of like talking the way that the big experts talk without knowing, right? To call upon something like he was talking about in the video. He goes, um, I go, Russell does that a lot. He goes, yeah, it's kind of like a dog. It's kind of like getting a dog. How many times have you ever gotten a dog? And then everybody raises their hand. Oh, I got a dog. I got that. All right. Right. And then he goes, what do you first do when you get a dog? You call it, you make it, you create a name for it, right? You name it. And then whenever you call upon the dog, it comes to you. Right. So the ideas, we're just putting words to them. We're putting a name on it. So when you're ready, you can call upon it, which is what I'm doing right now so that I can provide you the value. So, um, what he talks about is basically um, this concept in terms of, um, and I see it here in the book, it's called the One Sentence Persuasion Course by Blair Warren. That's who actually created this little one, this one sentence persuasion tactic. But really what it is, is it's a way of helping people um, where they want to be helped. Okay, so let's go through them. Number one is encouraging their dreams. So a leader that leads by example, person that sells ethically, encourages those people's dreams. So if your dream is to become financially free, my job is to encourage you become financially free, right? If I say you should never become financially free, financially free, you're a 
deadbeat. You're nothing. You're just one of those kids that wants to just live at home and just spend all their money and, and you know, just live on, a, on an island somewhere and never have to work. Right? If I say something like that, I'm not, cur- I'm not encouraging your dreams, so therefore I cannot lead you. But if I say, you can do it, man. That's exactly what you want. Let's see if we can get you there. I encourage your dreams or if someone can encourage your dreams, like Tony Robbins now leads with the sense of like love and encouragement. He leads like that. He leads through like encouraging people's dreams. As a leader, I'm just going to read it. As a leader, it's vital for you to first understand your audience's dreams, then encourage them inside um, this particular new opportunity, right? What they call um so encourage their dreams number two justify their failures this is huge huge justifying people's failures is gigantic because people people all fail right and they need someone to attach to and i learned this from um J. Abraham, right? J. Abraham, I think they call him like the $6 billion man because he, you know, he's like a master marketer. Tony Robbins goes to him, Damon John, um, the shark, basically all the sharks go to, you know, um, J. Abraham to learn the marketing strategies. And so what J. Abraham says is that everybody secretly wants to be led, right? And to lead someone like this, you have to justify their failures, Okay. In other words, you basically have to tell them stuff like, you know, you're right. You you did fail because that course sucked. That course does suck. Don't you hate it when course creators, um, you know, just create a course, hope you follow it and don't actually follow up with you and make sure that you do it. Don't you just hate that? Yes, I do hate that. Right. I do hate that. It's not your fault that you failed. It's because these course creators, they just create courses and they just want you to set it and forget it. They just want to set and forget it. And then they never talk to you again and they make money off of your, your mishaps because you didn't do anything. They're still making money and they don't care about it. They're like, eh, too bad, man. They got all the information. They should do it. Right? Like now I've justified your failure. So now you're like, well, that's cool. That's cool. Right. Um, you do the same thing for your customers. You're right. Like that product, that service was not right for you. And it was wrong for that, for someone to actually advise you to get that product. All right. So you align with their fear or their failures. They justify their failures. You're right. That was wrong. You were right. Most people who become followers and then fans um, have tried to make a change before. Look. I get it. You've watched videos like this. You're trying to make a difference. You're trying to make an impact. You're trying to make more money. You're trying to do things, but it's just not worked out, right? Well, the reason why it hasn't worked out is because you haven't followed the strategies of successful people. I'm not telling you I'm super successful, but I'm doing the things that they're doing and I'm teaching you the things that they're, that they're teaching me. And I'm paying thousands, tens of thousands of dollars to learn the things for you on your behalf. (gasps) Oh, okay. Okay. So, you will not be the first person that have tried to learn from them. So your customers have tried something else in the past to get the result that they're looking for. For some reason, they didn't get their net and their needs met and from any prior encounters. It's important for you to take the blame. It's important for you, me, you, you and us, both of us watching this video to take the blame for their mistakes. Because if we can take this, the blame for their mistakes, then we look at we look like the superhero for them like we are an advocate for them even if they never work for us right or never work with us we advocate for them when they're not there and the example in here says while millions cheer dr phil dr phil as he tells people to accept their their responsibility for their own mistakes millions more are looking for someone to take responsibility off their shoulders that's very important okay very important. Okay. Um, number three, ally their fears, right? Ally their fears. If you've ever followed a program or you've bought a course, or if you've ever invested into something that hasn't worked, it's not your fault. Like those are fears that you have, right? 
I'm scared of investing. I'm scared of getting coaching. I'm scared of getting another course. I'm scared of doing something and not getting it done. I'm afraid of doing these things. I'm afraid of failing. I'm afraid of, you know, doing something, going all in on something and then failing and missing out. I'm afraid on not doing something and missing out entirely on the opportunity I could have had. Those are all fears, right? I'm aligned with your fears. I know your fears. I know it, right? So you should know your customers the same exact way. For example, right? If someone is um, scared about buying life insurance, well, align with their fears. I understand it's scary to buy life insurance because then you're planning for your death. Why are you planning for your death when you know you're not going to die? Right? That's a question you might be asking yourself as an, in, as an agent. If you're an insurance agent who watches this, then you're probably asking yourself, people have asked you that question. Like, why should I get life insurance? I'm young. I, I don't need to plan for death. What do you say to that? Right? You're lying with their fears. I understand. It's scary to plan for your death. It's scary to invest into something you don't know what's going to come from it. Okay, so I lie their fears. Number four, confirm they're suspicious. If you've ever thought that they're plotting against you, if you ever thought that the the um the government is plotting against you, if you ever thought that, if you ever thought the IRS is against you, then you're right. If you ever thought that these big companies are just trying to take all your money and don't really care about you, you're right. That's what I would do in fitness, right? When I would do my fitness webinars, I would say. If you've ever wondered if Jenny Craig, Beachbody, Abocare, um, Herbalife actually care about you or really want you to see, succeed, you're right. Like They don't. If you ever thought they don't want to see, see you succeed so you can always buy their products, you're right. Oh, shoot. If you've ever wondered why, how all these bikini models and all that good stuff have the best body possible, it's because of their they're trained, they're super, you know, they got a bunch of money and they can hire expensive chefs and expensive trainers and you're right. Okay. Confirm their suspicions. Your audience is really suspicious of you, me, right? You're suspicious of me and others in the market. They want to believe change is possible. Everybody wants to believe that they have hope. I believe if you're here, you have hope for the future and change is possible through hope. If you have no hope, then you should probably hop off because you're not going to get anything from it and you're just going to leave negative comments for people to lose their hope and that's not going to help anybody okay they want to believe change is possible but they're skeptical about making the leap forward when you confirm in story format that you had a similar suspicion and describe how you overcame it it will bond you nothing 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 is more impactful than a story that bonds you i remember when i was when i was playing football I hated everything about football except the brotherhood, except the camaraderie, like except the, the feeling when we were doing gassers, what they call gassers, when you run from one side of the field to the other side of the field and we were competing. But when we put our, sh our shoulder pads down and we put our arms on our, on our knees and looked at each other side to side and we we're deep breathing and, and dying, we knew we were dying together. And there's nothing that brings people together like um, similar sacrifice. And so it's like confirming suspicions, like, dang, these coaches are out to get us, right? Let's band together, man. Let's do this. Let's get them. Let's make this work out better. Let's do this for us, but against them, right? That was the thing, us versus them. And then throw rocks at their enemies. Again, this is another, this is confirming their suspicion. You ever thought that? It's us versus them, right? Us little guys that have like, don't have a lot of money, we're going against the big guys that have all the money in the world. Us little guys that don't have all this, you know, the, the, the experience, don't have all the, all the followers on the world, we have to do things different. We have to do things a little more unique. We have to be a little different. We have to like move, shake and drive. And we have to like, um, you know, take more action and do more things and become more louder than they are and say things that they're not willing to say so that we can get to where they're at because they're not willing to do it, and we are. We're different, right? So essentially, those are throwing the rocks at their inner enemies. Um, so all of this going back to the idea that if you want to help more people, you have to understand how people are persuaded. And the only way to understand how people persuade it is how they persuade themselves already. So 
Um, this, I believe, is a great thing. I think you should go and read this book just to kind of get you an idea of how it works. But um, number one, encourage dreams, right? Let's just recap. Justify their failures, ally with their fears, like align with their fears, confirm their suspicions, and throw rocks at their enemies. Okay, do all those things, and then you will start to see people start to come to you instead of you having to go to them like a hung, a monster eating salesperson that sucks up the life from people. Okay, <laughs> so I know that's kind of crazy, but um, if this was helpful for you, share it with someone that you trust and you believe in that could help them in their process and also subscribe to the video and make sure to stay in tune with the updates of the videos that we're sending out we're going to be doing a lot more content for you to help you you know increase your sales monetize and systematize systematize automate and um, eliminate and delegate your whole business so it can start to work for you rather than you work for it so talk to you soon